Summary of Level Up, Get Focused, Stop Procrastinating, and Upgrade Your Life by Rob Dial, written and narrated by Janky Mind. Introduction Level Up Book is a handy book that shows you how to go from doing nothing to doing something that matters to you. It explains why you are stuck and how to get unstuck. Do you feel like you are not moving forward in life, even though you know what you want? Do you waste your days watching Netflix and TikTok while your progress is zero? Don't worry, you are not alone. But here's some good news for you. This book is your new best friend. It has useful tips from psychology and real-life examples that can help you find out what stops you and change your plans into actions. So if you want to break free from the boring cycle of meh and start living the life you dream of, it's time to dive in. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day, but they worked on it every hour. Let's work on yours. It's time to focus, act, and yes, level up. Chapter 1. Why You Don't Take Action You have a map to find a treasure, but you keep going around in circles. You want to reach the X that shows where the treasure is, but you can't take the right steps. What's stopping you? There are three main things that stop you. Fear, the stories you tell yourself, and not having clear goals. First, let's talk about fear, a feeling that everyone has, but that can also stop you from succeeding. Fear can be natural, but most fears are not born with you, you learn them. There are five common fears that make people not take action. Fear of failing. Fear of being rejected. Fear of succeeding. Fear of being seen as a fake and fear of being left alone. These fears make you imagine bad things that will probably never happen. To beat your fears, you need to see them for what they are, just illusions. When you see them like that, you can change them from obstacles to opportunities. Ask yourself what you are afraid of in the future. Are you afraid your business will fail? Or you will have no money? Or you will lose your loved ones if you succeed? So what? Do it anyway. Let fear show you where you are comfortable. Then go beyond that, taking small but important steps to grow your comfort zone. This is where you grow, where you find freedom. Besides fear, another thing that stops you from taking action is the story you have made about yourself over time, an identity based on your past experiences. This story can control what you think you can or can't do and keep you stuck in a version of yourself that doesn't match your dreams. The way to break free. Do things that may seem strange at first, but are steps toward the future you want. Even if it feels like you are pretending at first, these things will slowly make you a new person, one that fits the life you want. Imagine yourself, for one day, living as your best self. Everything you do, every choice you make, brings you closer to that reality. Finally, the last thing that stops you from taking action is not having clear goals. Yes, you may have dreams, but are they clear enough? Vague goals like losing weight or making more money don't have the details you need to achieve them. Be more specific. How much weight do you want to lose? How much money do you want to have in your bank account? To make your goals clear, find your passions. It's easy to stay motivated to achieve your goals when you love them. But how do you know what you love? Have an honest conversation with yourself about four things. What you love, what you are good at, what you can get paid for, and what the world needs. Find where these four things meet. That's your ikigai, your reason for living. This is what will make you want to achieve what you aim for. Once you understand your goals, make them a priority like you do with other things you need in life. Lastly, let's not forget the power of visualization. It's like a secret weapon, making your brain believe your goals are easy to reach. Visualization means putting yourself in a future situation, using all your senses to make it feel real, possible. This not only makes your dreams normal, but also makes you aim higher, like an athlete breaking records that no one thought possible. Do visualization every day and see how what seemed impossible becomes possible. So now that you know why you don't take action, it's time to move on and learn how to go from dreaming to doing. Chapter 2. How to Take Good Action Imagine going on a trip to a place you always wanted to see. 
you are very excited, but there is more to it than just going. To get to this dream place, you need to learn and do some important things. Let's start with direction. Knowing where you want to go is the key to any success. It's like having a compass that always shows you the right way. Without direction, speed is useless. You could be going fast, but if you are going the wrong way, you won't get to your goal. Now let's talk action. Actions are the things you do on your trip. Think of them as small, daily things that get you closer to your goal. These little actions make you better 1% each day. And while that may not seem like much over time, these small changes add up to something big. Each week, take some time to think. Ask yourself, what should I start, stop, and keep doing to stay on track? Time is very important too. We often want things right away, but real change takes time. It needs you to be consistent and patient. It's a choice between short-term ease and long-term benefit. Think of it as investing in your future self, in things like health, money, and relationships. Remember, easy choices now often lead to a hard life later, and the other way around. Now comes the hard part. Distractions. The modern world is full of them. From the attraction of social media to the noise of your phone, distractions steal your time and focus. The key. Be very aware of these distractions and deal with them smartly. Make an environment that helps you work. Simple steps like removing distractions from your work area, putting away your phone, or finding some quiet time can make a big difference. Remember, willpower is limited. Make your surroundings help you do the things that lead to success. After getting rid of the distractions, momentum is now your friend. It's the key to getting things done. Start your day with small wins. Get up when the alarm rings, make your bed, do your morning routine, focus on the top three most important things, and avoid looking at your phone in the morning. Then, increase your energy by getting enough sleep, light, smart eating slash fasting, and water. It also helps to match your tasks with your best energy levels, and remember to take breaks. These practices help build the flow, stopping you from getting tired and making you more productive. Last, focus is your superpower. It's the core of productivity. You can use different ways to improve this skill. The Pomodoro Way suggests 25-minute focused work times followed by short breaks. Bright, natural light and a quiet or music-friendly environment can also make your focus better. Also, having someone to keep you accountable can make you more committed and reliable. Moving your body and exercising also help your brain and keep your momentum. Lastly, a short cold shower can give you a quick boost in motivation. By doing these ways regularly, you'll make your mental focus muscles stronger, making you less distracted and more involved in your tasks. In short, reaching your goals is a trip that needs you to know where you are going. Clear the way of distractions, start with easy steps to build momentum, and sharpen your focus to keep working every day. With these things in play, you're not just dreaming of your place, you're moving toward it. Chapter 3. How to Keep Taking Action Imagine your way to success is climbing a mountain. Knowing why you are not moving and then taking small steps to go up is a good start. But you also need to keep going up with steady and regular effort. That's what your way to success is like. You first need to know why you don't take action, and then start doing small things to reach your goals. But you don't stop there. You need to figure out how to keep your momentum too. The answer is to use the power of consistency and make your brain work for you by making habits and using the brain's ability to change and feel good. Let's look at the idea of consistency. Think of it not just as a quality, but as a skill you can learn by doing the things you said you would even when you don't want to. This is where discipline is important, making you go beyond your comfort zone and do that extra 1%. Consistency also means making daily routines that match your goals. These small, boring actions might seem unimportant, like reading a few pages every day or meditating for 10 minutes, but they add up over time, leading to big changes. The key is to focus on these small actions, not on being perfect. After all, perfectionism often stops progress. 
Now, think about the power of habits. They help you do things automatically, making your life easier and saving your mental energy. To make good habits, start by checking your current ones and finding out which help you and which don't. Replace bad habits with keystone habits, those that make other parts of your life better. Make sure to focus on only one keystone habit for 100 days until it becomes natural. It also helps to use habit stacking, in which you connect a new habit to an old one. Standards are important, too. They're the lowest level you accept for the life you live. By raising your standards, you make room for new habits to grow, matching them with your changing identity and goals. Besides consistency and habit making, your brain has the key to easily keeping actions that push you toward your goals. One thing you need to use is the brain's ability to learn and change, called neuroplasticity. It lets you change your mind by working hard and doing things again and again. There are three kinds of neuroplasticity. Passive plasticity, which happens more easily when you are young. Bad plasticity from scary events. And good plasticity, which you can make on purpose. To use good plasticity, practice on purpose, go out of your comfort zone, and learn from mistakes to make your brain grow. This is made stronger by sleep, which lets these new skills stay in your mind. Dopamine, the brain chemical that makes you feel happy and motivated, is another important thing in this journey. By celebrating small wins, you make dopamine come out. So to make the process fun and lasting, try to make a steady flow of dopamine hits during the journey, not just at the end. This means making goals based on actions. Celebrate when you do one workout, not when you lose weight. Reward yourself when you read 10 pages, not when you finish the whole book. This way keeps you motivated and in love with the process, making sure you stick to your habits. But be aware of the need for change. Keep changing your rewards to keep that dopamine flow. Indeed, the way to success is not just about big jumps. It's about the sum of small, consistent steps. By making your brain work for you, making good habits, and being consistent, you're not just dreaming of your goal, you're moving toward it. Summary The way to level up needs three steps. Finding out why you don't take action, using ways to start taking action, and trying to keep taking action. The things that stop you from taking action are fears, stories, and unclear goals that make it hard to move forward. By knowing these things, you get the power to beat them. Next comes the exciting jump into action. This is not about big things, but about knowing where you want to go, avoiding distractions, and taking those first strong steps. Remember, every trip starts with one step, and yours is the same. And then, the real test, keeping the momentum. Make each day a chance, using the science of how your brain can change and feel good to change your behavior, one small thing at a time. As you keep going, the far top gets closer. Each step, each thing, each day, you're not just going toward your goals, you're turning into the person who can get them. The way is clear. The trip is waiting. Will you take the first step? This audiobook summary was brought to you by Janky Mind. We hope you enjoyed it.